South Sudan in Africa is home to some of God's most magnificent creation. Giraffes, elephants, leopards, and antelope roam the grasslands. In a region called the Sud, one of the world's largest wetlands, brightly colored birds nest in the thick vegetation, while hippopotamuses and crocodiles move through the waters of the Nile River. Throughout the bush, small villages dot the land. If you were to visit one of these villages, it would be like stepping back in time. The huts you see here are what South Sudanese families live in. Grass roofs, no electricity, no indoor plumbing or running water. The women cook outside over fires, and laundry is washed by hand in rivers or with water from a well. There aren't big cities with lots of jobs, so instead the South Sudanese people get food by farming for themselves. Each family has a field where the men and women work together to plant crops like corn and pineapple. In some ways, living in such a place may seem like a great adventure. For most families in South Sudan, life is very hard. Mosquitoes carry a disease called malaria, which makes a lot of the children and their parents very sick. Some even die. And in recent years, there's been a war going on throughout the country, and regular people have been caught up in the middle. When the soldiers start fighting each other, the families have to run for their lives. They leave behind their farms, and there isn't enough food to go around. The people are hungry. But in the midst of all these hard and sometimes terrible things, there is one bright light the light of Jesus Christ. About half of the people who live in South Sudan are Christian, including many Lutherans. In fact, there are over 200 Lutheran churches where people gather to find peace from all their troubles in the world. There they hear about how much Jesus loves them. They learn that even though bad things might happen to them in this life, they will someday have a perfect home in heaven. What good news this is for the people in South Sudan. A Lutheran church body was formed called the Evangelical Lutheran Church in South Sudan and Sudan, called the ELCSSS for short. Our Lutheran brothers and sisters are so excited and happy about God's love for them that they're telling their friends all about him. God's church is growing by leaps and bounds in South Sudan. In fact, the church is growing so much that the ELCSSS has a new difficulty. There are only 66 pastors for those 200 churches. That means at least three churches need to share a pastor, and the churches are often far apart. There aren't good roads to connect the towns, and so pastors either have to ride bikes or walk from church to church. Sometimes a church only has a pastor for one Sunday each month, so you can see that the people of South Sudan need lots more pastors. And this is where you, a young Lutheran on the other side of the world, can help more people in South Sudan hear about Jesus. In a town called Yambio, there is a school men can go to to learn how to be Lutheran pastors. It takes a long time to learn how to be a pastor, four whole years. Going to pastor school is a lot like it is for you to go to school. The men go to class every day, have lots of homework, and learn from their teachers how to do new things, like how to write a sermon. There are many men who want to become pastors, but they have a big problem. The people are very, very poor. They don't have the money they need to travel to Yambio, where the pastor school is. They don't even have enough money to buy school supplies or books. And their families also have a big problem. If their husbands and dads have to leave them to go to pastor school, who will do the hard work in the fields to grow their food? Your mission offerings are helping solve both these problems. When you send your offerings to the Lutheran Heritage Foundation, LHF gives the money to the ELCSSS Seminary to help pay for the pastor's schooling.
your mission offerings help pay for the men to travel to Yambio, for their food while they're there, for their beds to sleep in, and for their school supplies and books. Your gifts also help provide food for the men's families who are still back home. Think about how important your pastor is for your church, your Sunday school, or your Lutheran school. Children and their parents throughout South Sudan are waiting for a pastor to come lead their church and take care of their people, too. Your offerings make it possible for men like Emmanuel, Simon, Jackson, and Peter to stay in school and become pastors. Churches will have pastors who can go into the villages and tell the people about the one true God. New believers and babies can be baptized, and church members can receive forgiveness of sins and Holy Communion. With the Holy Spirit working through your offerings, God's word will spread even further in South Sudan. <laughs>